my name is Alfred Holikhaus. I'm uh, the head of the Spitzelorganisation der Filmwirtschaft, which is a, the umbrella organization of, um, of the German film industry, producers, exhibitors, distributors. Um, and um, I was asked to, to ask questions to this, f to this fabulous panel, because we just met, except Christina, of course, we just met before, and uh, we were thinking about uh, asking you out, because we, st we started talking, and I said, okay, we have to repeat all that inside. But I just want to, I need that, because we just met, I had really, really to, uh, to read the, na the names, but we make it short, because we don't have so much time. So of course, we start with the, uh, with the women. I'm old-fashioned enough to do that. Chris, uh, and I start, of course, both women are from Berlin, so I don't know whether, uh, who I start with. And I don't talk about age. Um, so, <laughs> <bo> <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm turning 60 next year, so it's okay. I, I'm the oldest. So uh, let's uh, let's start with uh, Bograd Galdagi. She uh, is uh, she started as a film uh, critic a uh, long time ago, and she was working in the business for a long time. And she was running a theater in uh, in Bucharest, um, the El Elvira Popescu Cinema, which was a very um, um, f famous and uh, very successful art house cinema uh, in the capital of Romania. Now she's working for CKA and she's uh, uh, managing director of CKA, uh, stationed here uh, in Berlin. Well, welcome to the panel. Thank you very much. Christina Berg is the CEO, COO, <laughs> I really can't keep that in mind, uh, of the uh, German uh, uh, film funding agency, FFR. And uh, you were expecting her colleague, Peter Dinges, because he was in the invitation, uh, he couldn't make it. We are glad that uh, we have Christine here, and she, would, she just said, okay, I'll do that from one day to the other, and she's, of course, uh, very welcome. Thank you very much for doing that. <laughs> Justin Kim, um, <laughs> as the name tells, he comes from South Korea. It's... Um, a very common name in South Korea, as far as I know. Um, and he, is, uh, he started as a, 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 a fundraising and, uh, man and producer, and working in the, in the, in the film, uh, film financing business. And being successful in that, he started to write a script, uh, which was even more successful, as I learned. And so he, he's now uh, someone who can tell, tell us about the financing structure and, the, and what the film screenwriting in Korea is, is about. And that is, you can welcome him as, as well, please. <laughs> and then we have from Kenya, Kechitin Boy. He uh, is a writer and producer in, uh, in Kenya, and he told us you have to be both. Maybe, maybe you're also director and actor as well. That would uh, help to finance a film in, in Kenya very much. I'm very glad that... that uh, <laughs> Hey, Chijan is with us. So it's, um, it's, it is what's going on in, not only in Germany, in, 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 all, in, in all of Europe, in the world, but very much now in Germany is uh, a big discussion about uh, the future of, uh, of uh, the big screen, the future of cinema, and we have a lot of discussions with the polit polit politicians about that. And it all, it's, of course, all about infrastructure, or a lot about infrastructure, and uh, we really have to talk about that as well here, but it's so good to be in a, we have an audience uh, and participants on the panel who are not only specialists in these uh, things, but also in content, because I think it's uh, not very uh, original to say that the future of cinema must be, uh, is the future of content and is, uh, is uh, made by the content, because uh, you don't only go to the cinema because you're sitting in a nice place. You have to see great things, and that's what we want to talk about as well. But first of all, the, the naked facts. <laughs> Let's about, that, talk about that, because we want really to know how the situations in the different countries uh, uh, are and what we can, 
change about it or what we can learn about it. And I want to end with you, just because you have something prepared, you have a PowerPoint presentation of what you did, of what happened in Korea, so I think you should maybe be the, be the last. So, uh, Christina, I start with you. Yeah. <laughs> because um, I think everybody knows that the, the, uh, the situation in Germany is not, uh, not so nice. Uh, we had bad, a bad year, and we were expecting a bad year. We had, uh, 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 in terms of... Uh, of the of admissions in terms of what the people wanted to see or if they wanted to see something at all. What can you tell us about that? What are you allowed to tell us and what you really know? Um, first of all, thank you very much. Um, um, and thank you very much for the invitation and that I can come. Um, so um, this year is... I think it's a good year and it's a bad year. Um, it's a good year because of the weather. We, in Germany, um, we love rain, but if it is sunny outside, um, we go out. And it's also okay for us. So we don't go to the cinema. So what's happened this year is, that's true, we have not so many admissions and we have a minus. Um, we can't really say how high it is at the end of the year because um, we hope that the autumn will be better for the cinema. But um, we are very surprised because if you, if you look outside, it's really sunny already. And um, it's really in Germany, if the sun is coming out, uh, the people doesn't go to the cinema, only a few ones. Um, so we will see what's happened the next three months because we have some films which are coming also from Germany, big ones. Um, but we know, uh, right now, we know that um, we, we go down. So um, this is our year. Um, I think this is one thing, and I think it's also good for the industry because now we have to think what's happened here, what's happened with the films, what's happened with the stories, and what's happened to what is the future for the cinemas. You mentioned already that um, we discuss a lot with the um, um, politic. Um, what can we do for the cinemas? Because um, it's not only the sun, it's also Netflix, that the people like to, go, uh, to sit at home and look the series. Um, I heard it from my friends every time we talked about already. Um, my friends, for example, they really, on Monday, they tell me the stories like, I had, yesterday I looked five hours a series. It was so great with my Coca-Cola and then I, I had a wine. And so it's sexy to see something at home and it's not sexy to go to the cinema. So I think it's really a challenge for us that we, on the one side, that we do something for the cinemas, for the buildings, um, and that we have good buildings and that we have, that we have something that the audience think Wow, what's happened there? Wow. So this is the first thing. And the other thing is it's a challenge for us that we look um, for the stories. What kind of stories do we have to tell to the people that they want to go and that they think they can see this kind of stories only in the cinema? And it's very, it's very important to see it. So these are the two things, I think, right now, what we talk about. Yeah. But like, um, you made... Uh you made a difference in in, 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 in in Bucharest with your cinema because uh, it was successful and people wanted to go there and they found it sexy. What made it sexy? Wow, that sounds um, so attractive in a cinema. <laughs> um, well, it, it didn't start off like that. I, I believe I was very lucky because the cinema belonged to the French Institute. Mm. I need to point that out because I think that will come out later on anyway regarding the French support given to cinemas and film production. And uh, I had the support of a director who allowed me to be free in my programming which means that uh, choices that I've been making at the beginning that didn't seem very attractive at the beginning paid out, let's say, long term because we have established a specific programming. It was basically editorialized. And you had a lot of regulars coming to the cinema? No? Yes, but I wouldn't say it was necessarily very new, the approach of you know, trying to have a pricing that is adequate for families in some cases and for cinema goers on the other hand. Uh, we worked a lot with associations, we had, um, and we've been always there, and we had a black cat, and, uh, and I had a team who was 
willing to do overtime, a lot of overtime, <laughs> because I must say, I, I think this is typical for most of the film industry, and this might be in common with scriptwriters as well, that you can't just stay, I don't know, nine to five and do an office job if you're making movies or showing movies because your audience is there in the evenings and in the weekend and the festival is taking place in the weekend and at night and the technical issues will most probably arise Friday night when the technical maintenance company won't be in reach until Monday. So you just have to be there for the people. And what I felt mostly, and what I see in many of the European success stories in art cinemas, because that's where I come from, that's my background, we worked a lot on community building. So you have a programming that has to be very consequent. But on the other side, you have to be there for the people. So whether they have a complaint or whether they they really like the, cinema, the movies they've seen, or whether they just want to have recommendations or talk to someone who actually knows their stuff, you have to be there for them. And I see or I believe that our cinema made a difference in this matter. So I, I full-heartedly believe in that kind of art cinemas where people have someone to talk to all the time. And in big cities, I believe it, it's that much more important to have that. So if you have a city of a few millions people, um, that's what makes cinemas work, at least even here in Berlin. The, I've moved here only two months ago. That's what I love, that there are all kinds of boutique cinemas and, and yeah, and where you can feel cozy, even if I have to travel sometimes 30, 40, 50 minutes to get there. <laughs> when, we, when we told you uh, before we started here that uh, German cinemas show around more than 600 films a year. You were, let's say, surprised. That was I, was, I was blown away. This, was, this, was, this would suffice as a fourth four century in, uh, in Kenya, I think. <laughs> oh, well, the situation in Kenya is, uh, is really tough because, uh, first of all, we don't have the infrastructure. Uh, about um, 15, 20 years ago, we had about 30 theaters. Right now, we've got about 11 because they've been closed down and turned into churches. Another problem we have is we don't have a cinema-going culture. Uh, people have preferred to go out and borrow. Uh, it's, it's cheaper to borrow a season, uh, to buy a, a pirated season of a TV series than to go and watch a movie. So people are not going to the movies. And then the final problem is, uh, as uh, makers of content, as producers, we have absolutely no government support. So independent producers have to figure out how to make their movies. So all these three things combined make it really tough for the Kenyan filmmaker. And uh, the future of screens in Kenya uh, becomes much harder to see. It seems like it has to move from the big screen to another format. Okay. And, the, what, what, and, and another problem you, you, you told us before is the um, we don't call it censorship, we call it uh, classification in, uh, in, in Kenya. This is what makes it also hard. But we come to that later if, you, if it goes to content and what you, what, you te what you tell and what stories could be interesting and should be told and can't be told. Okay. You know? Thank you very much. Uh, Justin, it's, uh, I think the situation in South Korea is totally different than in Kenya and you can tell us how different and maybe or why. Um. <clears throat> Well, Korea it seems like the only country in the world that the cinema uh, theatrical revenue is growing up. Uh, for the last 20 years, uh, it became four times uh, growth. Uh, so when I talked about this to my uh, Canadian uh, colleague, he was like, what? Why are you making great popcorns? So, <laughs> so no, it's not about popcorn. The, the key is uh, the boom of local movies. The Korean uh, film made a lot of great success in commercial areas. Uh, so that's the, the leading force of uh, growing growth of the uh, theatrical market. So when I talk about this uh, commercial success, maybe the writers, including myself, would, would think, uh, is, it, is it necessarily a good thing? Uh, but I think it's a good thing because uh, it gives uh, freedom uh, and power to writers. Uh, I believe there are some stories that can, can only be told or is best to, uh, to be told in, in, in movie format. Well, TV is great, but it's a totally different animal. But the, there's, uh, there are some stories when it is told through a movie, 
It has a, such a power, uh, such a, a resonating, resonating voice. So it will liberate you, you know, as a writer to have a, a, a strong uh, means to express yourself other than TV series. So they will give you freedom. Uh, and then power is also, when we talk about commercial feeling, we just naturally react, well, we're not doing this for money. But it's not really about money, I think. It's a more of a, about reaching out to more people. So when you are a speaker, you naturally think about how can I be heard to more people? I think that's a natural duty for, for as a speaker to think about. So as a film writer, you should do the, I think, I believe you do the same thing. I mean, you have a strong message, uh, some story to tell, but you can't just say it in a way that only you can understand or only, only or several group of people can understand. Well, you have to think about how can this story can be heard or attract more people. So that is translated into the admission at the theater and the money comes along. Uh, and then as a producer said yesterday, the money comes along and that gives you a secured and, and, and the, a safe environment as a, as a creator. And then you can move on to think about some other stories uh, freely uh, from worrying about your you know, bills. So I think that's a de definitely a good thing. Um, so um, I prepared some short um, presentation to uh, share with you. There are, uh, the first thing, like I said, in Korea, theatrical revenue grew four times over the last two decades. The key driving force of such growth was a uh, boom of Korean local movies. And the boom of local movies is depending on the attracting numerous talented people to the industry. So, what is a natural thing? So, if you want to grow an uh, industry, you need two things. One is human, one is uh, manpower, another is money. So, attracting many people, talented people is the key. And third point is the attracting numerous talented filmmakers is depending on both private and um, public investor with longer vision. Uh, the, key point, key to signal, the key is to signal I am here to say to make profitable movie. So when I say profitable movie, like I said, you, know, you might, well, but is think in a way that I, I want to reach out to more people, okay? So this is uh, the theatrical revenue growth of Korea for about uh, 18 or 15 years. Uh, in 2011, it just started just, you know, we can just compare the blue, a red, mark, a red uh, bar is Korean movie, a yellow is, is foreign movie. Most of them, them is, is Hollywood film. And it is up and down, but it was growing rapidly. So when it started, the uh, Korean movie was around 230 million, and the same with the foreign movies. In 2011, it was about 820 million, and, and foreign movie was slightly small. So it's 3.4 times, but if you drag the time a little bit earlier, it can be four times. So this is how fast uh, the market was growing. Uh, so it is not, so maybe it, it is not zero-sum game. Uh, it is not the, well, if the local film advances, uh, it will eat up the market share of Hollywood film or the other way around. If two movies are great, it, it will attract more people. I think it's, it's, it is more synergy than cannibalism. So uh, somebody said, um, when, and a lot of people are asking, uh, is, is there a future for, for a theater going? Be, uh, because TV sets are wonderful, their sound system is great. Uh, it's a lot easier to, to watch this movie at home. But I believe there is, still is a strong need as long as there is a great movies to watch at theaters. Uh, I think this, this is, I mean, Korea, where well, there are a lot of good TV sets. I mean, it's, it's, it's a super uh, TV set everywhere uh, in, in a house, but people are st still decide to go to the theater. So, um, <clears throat> so when you, let's first talk about the uh, monetary resource, how, how we started. Uh, in, in 1984, uh, the import, importation of foreign movies started. And in 1988, the Hollywood studio uh, direct distribution was allowed, so Sony, Disney, uh, Columbia, those uh, big companies made a branch office and, and directly uh, distribute uh, their own film. 
And from 19, early 1990s, uh, companies like Samsung and Hyundai, uh, they have electronic uh, companies. So they are making basically video cassette and video players at that time. So to sell more of those things, they kind of thought that, well, why don't we invest in Korean films? Uh, Korean investment in Korean film is, is quite small uh, compared to the size of the, the company. So they, they thought it easy. But at the, at the end of the uh, 1990s, there was a financial crisis nationwide. Uh, so governments was forcing them to shut down some uh, business division that doesn't make money. So they all, all of them gave up on uh, a film. So they, people thought that, wow, this is a doomsday, it's, a, it's over. But uh, miraculously, the venture capitalists uh, loomed up. And the government was giving lots of money uh, to these venture capitalists. I think I found uh, one key difference uh, between Korea and other country is that I understand a lot of uh, countries are, are receiving um, subsidies from the government, but what Korean government did was they're not directly giving the money to the producers, but they gave the money to the venture capitalists and met, make venture capitalists decide which movie they, can, they, will, they will invest. Uh, so the venture capitalist uh, incentive is to make money. So they thought they thought hard. Well, which movie will, will be uh, make money, will be making money, meaning that which movie will reach more. So some of them uh, did good, some of them did bad, and the government's job was to evaluate which venture capitalist did well and which capital, uh, capitalist did uh, or worse. So they assess and then they give more money to the successful ones. So by doing this, um, they, for like, like about 15 years, they uh, gave like one point, of, a little bit more, one billion dollar uh, as a subsidy so far. And there was a third wave that is that started from uh, mid uh, 2000. That is a, a CJ, Lotte, those kind of, they are the big companies in Korea too, uh, and then they, started a business of multiplex uh, theatrical chain. And then they started to build uh, chain, uh, theaters and then they thought, why, why don't we invest and distribute ourselves? So they become another uh, powerful money, uh, money source. So these CJ and Lotte, these guys, and then the venture capitalist guys uh, work together to figure out uh, which movie to invest. But one distinctive uh, difference in Korea was there is a uh, investor called main investor, meaning that the main investor is responsible for financing 100% of the film. So unlike other countries where the producers need to go to different money sources and get the uh, uh, financing, 10% from here, 20% from there, but Korea there is a main investor. If the main investor like it, then producer doesn't need to worry about the financing because they are the one who takes full responsibility of financing 100%. And the, usually those people are like uh, uh, the CJ and Lotte, those uh, distributors. And then they uh, team up with the venture capitalist and then they show uh, these are <coughs> the, the movies they resourced. So out of these movies, which one would you like to invest? So they, they co-work together. So, so they find, find out uh, which will reach out most. And then the, in, in terms of human resource, when the uh, 1980s uh, Korean market was open to Hollywood, uh, we call it the cinephile. The, 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 the people who love to go to cinema, uh, the generation started. Before the Korean movie was really bad, really lousy, and nobody really watched it. Watched it. Uh, and, but it's in the mid, mid 80s, uh, when Hollywood movie was also booming, uh, they were like making only 150 or 60 per year, and then in the mid-80s, they started to churn out like 600 or 500 movies. So there was like a big bang of uh, a movie at the time. And that influenced strongly in Korea too. So before uh, 1990s, including my parents, uh, they used to tell their children that, well, there are two occupations that you shouldn't be considering at all. <laughs> it's not only going to ruin you, but it's going to ruin your uh, entire family's life. So one is congressman, never ever think about it, and second is filmmaker. <laughs> so we were like, I, I also you know, heard, heard about that, and so is filmmaking is supposed to be a very, very bad choice for, for your life. But when the, the film was 
uh, when, 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 but when people were exposed to these uh, great films, a lot of different genres, a lot of different story and style, they started to dream. You know, well, one day maybe I can do something like that. So that was the birth of the, that generation. And then when Samsung and Hyundai came in, um, it was a strong signal for them. Well, these become, if these big companies are investing in films, maybe I have a, I have a future in, in this sector. Uh, they will not just walk away because they are so big. Uh, so they started to jump in to this film industry, these uh, talented guys with a strong passion. And then, but they were devastated when, when they all just backed off. But as I as told you before, uh, the venture capitalists uh, took on and it's just another third wave, second wave, third wave. So they were, they were okay. So in 1999, there was the uh, big bang of the Korean film. Uh, like from this mid 80s uh, to this point, it was like 15 or to 10 years have passed. Those generations who has passion to make film started to uh, accumulate their skills and then started to boom from this point on. So there's a movie called Shiri. Uh, they, the, the movie alone got 6.2 million uh, admissions. That was basically remarkable at the time because before, Two million admission was like kind of a groundbreaking record. But this one record is six million. So people just thought, is it pos ever possible? And, and then they kind of thought, well, this kind of movie will never ever happen again in 10 years. But what happened was the next, from the next year, another five million, another six million, another seven million. And then the old boy came, uh, as some of you might know. And then they, it, the, the film got a uh, kind of Grand Prix. Uh, and then it, they, it just known, that, and that's the point where the Korean cinema started to get known to, to the world. And there was a, even, these movies are movies that recorded, uh, collected more than 10 million admissions. The number was never conceivable. We, we thought that 6 million is kind of a maximum. Uh, what Korean total population is, uh, is little more than five, uh, 15 million. But the age from 15 to 50 is 26 million people. So 10 million admission means that almost half of those people who go to the, to the theater watch the, the one film. So it became like social phenomenon. And then when, when the first th uh, 10 million movie uh, came out, the people thought that, well, this is a miracle. This will never ever happen again. But it was keep on happening and happening. And up until now, there was 22 uh, films that collected more than 10 million people uh, admission. And out of uh, 22, only five uh, is Hollywood film. So 17 is local film. So yeah, so that's it. Um, so basically, um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So basically. Um, it really comes down to a human resource and a smart money uh, to find a way to nurture those people, uh, give them a, a, a space to, to express themselves. And, and, and then the, you might just think, the, oh, well, this is all just entertainment movies. So, but some of, them, some of them are yes, but some of them are no. To give you one example, there was a, 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 in 2005, there was a, the news uh, broke out this about this uh, special school uh, that is training these deaf children, uh, minor children, and then it turns out that the principal and, and, and teachers of the school was sexually abusing these kids, minor kids, deaf kids. So there was a big news nationwide. Uh, so people thought, well, you know, they gotta get a death, death sentence or something, but they kind of walked away with a very light penalty. So pe people got frustrated, uh, TV ma uh, station made a documentary about it, but nothing really happened. And then several years later, the, a novelist, female novelist, uh, wrote a novel about it, nothing really happened. And then a filmmaker come uh, stand up and then I will make a movie out of it. So he made a mo great movie called Silenced, uh, released in 2011. So it was a time <clears throat> where uh, people started to forget about the, in the incident. And then when the movie was released, uh, it collected like five million uh, admission. That, that's still this great number. And then everybody was shocked to, to see what's really happening, what, what, what happened at the time. 
So for the six years, nobody really did anything. But when the, the movie was released in, in September, but in November, the new law was legislated and came, came into effect uh, to give a heavier penalty for these child, a minor, uh, and then disabled uh, people molesters. And then also, they, they, did it, they make it really, really strict, uh, which never, nobody kind of expected. But because of this one movie, uh, the new, new law was, was adopted. So I think that's a very strong uh, power uh, from a uh, screenwriter's point of view. So, so I, I hope that the same thing can, can happen to you know, any of your country. And I strongly believe that any country has a, has a potential to reach to the 50% market share as, as we did. So good luck to you guys. <laughs> This was really great story because it was not, all, not only about business, it was really about, uh, about content and that's very interesting because I think some of you might uh, uh, be interested to hear more about producers who have no responsibility. Um, uh, but uh, but the, the responsibility is with the money, but the money makes films like that possible as well. That's a, that, that's a very interesting thing. That's also interesting for for the discussions going on in, on, on in Germany. You know, that, that's, I think that's a very good point. But uh, Katrina, I think you really want to know, you said the future is different, but I think you have, maybe there's a relationship in, 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 in terms of topics, in terms of what should be told to, uh, to the people, and maybe that local, local content is, uh, is part of the future. This is something I learned from what Justin just said. Well, I, I do agree, local content is definitely part of the future. Um, the challenge is, as I said, is the infrastructure is not there. Mm. Uh, in terms of story-wise, I think Africa, we've got and untapped stories. Uh, most people don't know any of the stories we have in Africa. Uh, the content is there. It is the infrastructure and the funding that we need to make these movies. And um, right now, there are a lot of uh, independent filmmakers trying to, to hustle. We call it hustling, trying to hustle and make their movies. Uh, but it's still, it's still really tough. But I, I do believe that, um, as I was saying, I think for us in Africa, it might not be the big screen because as independent filmmakers, we are moving, we are trying to move uh, to trying to do, what did I call it? Um, web, web kind of series, web series kind of stuff, shorter content, shorter format, uh, stuff that can be viewed off the mobile phones. So it is our hope uh, that we can't, we, unless the infrastructure is put in place, which is really inexpensive, we do not see how we can manage with the big theater systems. We have to go... Uh, slightly differently, but we are also trying as a as a guild. We have been trying to engage our government to come up with a film policy. There's been a film policy that's been in the pipeline for about 15 years. It's just been sat on, and we are trying to push for that because in the film policy there's a film fund. So we do hope that if this goes through, we can have some money and we can start making our own content. Okay, from the. European point of view, you know, we have uh, we have uh, your uh, um, example. We had it already. We have the we've ju you just talked about uh, uh, France, you know, as a as an as an example where it, uh, where the support for for uh, film is di is different in terms of content and in ter terms of how people look at uh, at at films, what, what what they mean for them in, in, in terms of yes, let's say the bad word culture. Um, do you think there's a future in Germany for that? That's a very, um, is, is this question addressed to me because I just arrived in Germany, um, uh, so <laughs> I, I might need some more time to, to think about it, but yeah. in France what I would see is that children go to school and can have a baccalaureate, like, uh, like finish their school studies and choosing cinema as, a, as an optional, you know, like they have an exam from cinema film history and, and they start off as little children going to the cinema and there is a cinema on, well, if you're in a city, basically on almost every corner. <laughs> so it's, it could be even church. It depends, I think, what is the role of cinema in a specific place and what kind of movies are being made because France produces over 300 movies a year I think right now I'm, I'm I don't know the exact number for the for the past year, but like in the last five years, mm -hmm. so they don't even get a release in cinemas, all of them, and there is a very hard selection of what will get shown on a big screen. So on one, which we don't have in Germany, 
may be part well, of the future. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure if I, all German movies don't get a release, I, I think. Um, they yeah, get a release. They, they all get a release. They get. And, um, and I, I don't know what would be the real criteria, because you would have an audience for almost anything, I would say. Not almost anything. <laughs> Quality is, of course, very important. But when I mean almost anything, it could be a different genre, it could be a different type of story, but I would say the cinemas would have to collaborate with the filmmakers and the distributors a lot, because the cinemas are there to know those people who come to see the movies, and they know what type of stories or what type of movies they want to see, because they can go out and have a conversation about what they liked, what they would be interested in seeing, so uh, I think it would be really interesting to see maybe the filmmaking part and the authors getting more involved in going to the cinema. But not necessarily like just going to the cinema, but having good relationships with cinema programmers. Uh, I think that could actually work. At least uh, I had made this experience. And as a cinema manager, I have also been... Uh, convincing distributors to buy certain movies or project managers to get for film education specific movies or film directors would get in touch with us also when they were just in working progress, you know, uh, to have already an early feedback on, on their work and what direction they were taking. So I would actually really like to see more collaboration on, on this side. I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, we made good experience with this because um, our pool who make the decision um, about the project, we have people there from script writers, directors, producers, um, distributors, and uh, cinema owners. And so they talk together about the projects. And also we have a new um, subsidy. It's for, um, for script writers. It's um, for the development. It's not if you have a script and you want to develop the script, um, then you can get money from us. So this is new since two years. And we have um, someone who goes with them. So it's, um, I don't know the English name for this. So someone who goes with them. And they talk, they talk about the script. And it's really very, very important if we have some, we ha sometimes we have some cinema owner who said, oh, I want to go with them and I want to discuss with them. And it's really interesting what's happened because it's another view. Um, to the project, for example, about the title, about, no, I don't think that my, my admission they want to see because... And, yeah, they don't... Sometimes the cinema owner, they don't know really something about the dram uh, dramaturgy, dramat dramaturgy. Oh. <laughs> dramaturgy. In German, you say dramaturgy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I hope you know now what I, exactly what I mean. Um, they don't know exactly what, you can, what they can do, but they can feel it, and they know a lot. And it's so, so important that we learn from each other, and that we um, also, um, that we learn that script writing is so important, and because I have to go in a few minutes, and so I, I want to so, say so just we. a little bit more about it, <laughs> because right now I'm on my way. <laughs> go ahead. Um, because I, I think also one thing is really we have to think um, together what can we what kind of stories do we tell in future and how we support them because it's I think our system for example we give money to to one uh, project so to one script but um, I learned today and it was really like wow <laughs> that you said no we give money to people and they make the decision what kind of project they want to do. And it's just a little bit like slate, fu slate funding. Um, the media program, they have something like this. They give money to producers, and they make their own decision what, which films they want to develop. So, and I think a little bit, maybe we have to think what we can do in future as the subsidy um, to support more, and it's not only money, it's really also the system. So I think really we have to think about the cinema, but we have to think also how can we support the script writers that they have the chance to think more and they have the time. Because what we hear every time is that the script writer, um, they, have, they, they need a long 
long time to write a script, you know it better than me, um, long time to write a script for cinema. So, the re so what they do is now, they're going to TV and they're going to the series. Um, a lot of people right now, um, they have no time because they have jobs from Netflix and from other um, and the TV station. So I think we, we, we need something. We need a new, not a new system and everything will be great, but we have to think about this. Um, I think this is also the future for the subsidies. So this was a long, but right now, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I have to say this. Um, I have to leave this panel and I'm so ashamed and I'm, I'm so sorry because it was so great the last two hours with you um, because we had really one hour before <laughs> at the terrace and I learned a lot about a lot of things, but I have to go to Warsaw and the train is not my own train. Um, it's, it's a public one. No, but... So I, like I really the subsidies. have to go. So it's, it's all right, we are, we, are, we are asked to stop here, but, uh, but Justin wanted to say, uh, to add something to that, and I want to, to, to let him do that. Yeah, well, as, as you said, uh, we were talking about this before, like, and then I started to realize that the Korean system has somewhat similarity with Hollywood system, uh, which is like, as I told you before, there's a main uh, investor, and then, all the, then the, if there's a main investor, the producer's job is to, to get okay from a main investor. Uh, and then, the, then the, the, the writer's job is to get okay from the producer. So if you think about it, maybe it's a, it's a kind of, a, as a writer, maybe not happy thinking because you have to go through the get okay from the producer and get okay from the main investor. But Unlike TV series well, where uh, multiple writers write together, then you have this, this objective eyes naturally already there. So they, you talk about each other in the room and you get objectivity, objectivity uh, during, during the course. But most of the time, the film, the writers write in the isolation. They write alone. So I, well, it's, it's a good start. You need a uh, alone. You, you need you need to be alone to to come out to generate something. But when you generate something, then definitely you need a third voice and, and second opinion. So if there's a the producer and the main investor with keen eyes, then they can actually help you out. You know, to to carve your story in in a form that that can reach to more people and and and, and, and be successful and give you more power. So I think, I think you need to think about how you can create uh, that kind of uh, uh, system uh, in each of the country. That's right. Thank you very much. The, I think the whole cool Congress is about uh, uh, to uh, contribute to make this isolation splendid. And uh, maybe we, have a, we did a little step on that. And thank you very much for that. Have, I'm sorry that we had to, had to stop at the show must not go on, but it will go on. And, uh, and I think it will be great. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you very much for the contribution. It's great. <laughs>